Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sam for more, it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you how to use MediFin back inside Rumble and I'm going to show you an application of that creating the start of a new keyboard arranger. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So let's go ahead and create a new project like so. Let's go to the main track and let's say that I want to drive something that is on the main track, for example, uh, from track number one. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I could, for example, add a MIDI to CV here after track number one. And then after that, I could, for example, add an FM operator. Now, uh, let's take the input of that master track and connect it to the output of that FM operator. And uh, if I press some keys now, you don't hear anything, of course. But uh, uh, because the connectivity is only towards track number one. But if I connect, for example, the MIDI input of track number one to the input of main track, in terms of MIDI, and I'll press keys on the keyboard, you hear, of course, some uh, some sounds. Now, let's say that I disconnect that. Um, so again, if I press keys on the keyboard, you don't hear anything. But if I go now to track number one, you will hear a uh, sound, and that's because uh, MIDI is connected from track number one to track to the MIDI to CV here, okay? So, but let's assume, um, for for example, that you don't have this connectivity and that the um, um, MIDI to um, CV is uh, actually connected to the uh, MIDI input of the main track, like so, right? So, if I press keys now on the keyboard, it works because the MIDI to CV here is connected to the uh, main track, MIDI input. Let's go to the track number one now. This will not work anymore. Now, let's assume that we want to uh, drive um, using some MIDI modules, let's try track number one, without using that MIDI connectivity, the modules which are in the main track. So how would I do that? Well, one way to do that would be, let's go to the main track. Let's ensure that the MIDI input is set to all. And uh, you have a new option here, which is MIDI to feedback, by the way, which is different from Drumbo. But let's set the receives MIDI to always. So it will always receive MIDI even when the main track is not active. Let's go back to the um, main track now. Let's go to the property and let's ensure that um, as a MIDI input, you don't have all and you don't have MIDI to feedback because we're going to send MIDI messages from track number one to the MIDI to feedback um, port and or output. And um, and we don't want to have input coming through uh, MIDI feedback. So let's select uh, uh, Drumbo in this case. So uh, we could add now a Euclidia uh, sequencer like so, right? And if I click play, actually, you don't hear anything again because it's not sending out MIDI messages now. So let's, um, uh, which goes through MIDI feedback, by the way. So what we could do is add a MIDI output, select uh, MIDI to feedback now, and click play. So the Euclidean MIDI sequences generate a MIDI event, which then are sent to the MIDI output module, which is sending the, those MIDI messages to MIDI to feedback, which are then coming back inside the main track. And, and then that uh, MIDI messages are connected through the MIDI to CV here. And that is how it works. Okay, let's put that to practice in some into perhaps the beginning of what could be a keyboard arranger. So let's create a new project. Let's go to track number one. Let's set that track not to receive immediate uh, feedback. So we're going to say only Drumbo, like so. And um, let's select that after the MIDI to CV, we uh, generate a note. And then we send it out through the MIDI output to MIDI feedback. Okay, there you are. Let's go to track number two now. Let's go to the properties and let's set that track to all we receive in MIDI. Next, um, actually, I also want to set the MIDI to CV here voices to maximum on track number one before I forget. Let's go back to track number two. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to do some filtering because I want to have um, only certain notes to play, for example, a bass in this track. So we select note filter, we go to the top range and we select E2. Okay, so we go from C2 to E2, which are those keys that you see here. Next, we're going to arpeggiate a bass. So therefore we are going to select um, something like arp. 
we're going to set the rate to half, OS to sync, and the range of octave to two. Next, we are going to add a bass because we want to have a, an output. So we select the FM bass. Like so. And then we are going to add also a pitch module to lower the pitch by two octave, like so. So let's try. Perfect. Now let's go back to track number one. Wow. Let's go above E2. You don't have any notes produced. So from C2 to E2, I can play an arpeggiato bass from track number one. And the bass, of course, is in track number two. Okay, let's go to track number three now. Let's set these to all we receive uh, uh, MIDI messages, like so. Then let's set uh, a note filter as well. So let's uh, find the note filter, like so. Let's just set the starting point here to F2, um, like so. Let's uh, set the MIDI to CV this time to maximum. And let's add um, an ARP module as well here. And we set, um, we leave the rate to one, why not? And um, what did we set it to host to sync? And then we are going to add um, a new instrument. Uh, let's go for that uh, April black, um, like so. Oops, there you are. And let's change uh, a lot, uh, lower a little bit the volume. I know they, these normally is quite high. So let's try on the keyboard now. Okay, so let's ensure that we have from F2 to C3. Uh, oops. Okay, let's try again. Really nice. So let's go back to track number one and let's try to play everything together. that is the start of a keyboard arranger so let's go to track number four and why not let's copy and let's hold uh, click and hold here on the filter let's copy that let's go to track number four and let's add that we click on paste like so so we have the same um range and then what we're going to do here we're going to add um, a pad uh, let's choose uh, uh, these uh, pad here Okay, now uh, let's set the track to all we receive MIDI, like so. Let's go back to track number one and try. That works perfectly, but let's increase the number of voices to 16th. Otherwise, we cannot play multi polyphony on that uh, pad. So you have three tracks and you can continue like this. You could even add, for example, a uh, kick drum. So let's say, uh, for example, add um, something like the N -A -N, um, kick, like so. And then uh, let's do something like that. And then let's go to the next track and let's search for something like snare, like so. And then let's add something like this. So let's go uh, back to um, track number one, play, and then I will activate the drums when I'm ready. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.